Little Nitro. Stacked. If James lost, he'd have to eat a dub. I'm not doing that. Did you see that clip of Deion Sanders? You don't call Nick Saban Nick. Don't call me Deion. Let me put some respect on his name. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Paul Rodriguez Show. It is Monday, the May 1st. Shout out to everybody out there celebrating birthdays this past weekend. Our man in the DF dub via his uh, private transportation has celebrated a birthday yesterday. But in the in the booth, in the studio, producer James in the mix, repping the Iron Mike Tyson T. Wes, James, how y'all living tonight, fellas? How y'all doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, you know, it had a, had a uh, good weekend of fun and yeah, trying you to did. get back to normal life. All right. I heard, I heard, I heard you had a little escapade, had a little good time out there in uh, the hill country of central Texas. James, I'm going to ask you about your shirt later. We've got a lot of big news in the sports world coming off. We have the NFL draft wrapping up Saturday. We had uh, college, or not college, but uh, NBA basketball wrapped up yesterday with a huge game one series. Uh, I think right now Boston and Philadelphia are squaring off at the same time what the show is going on. Wes, I want to talk a little bit, a little bit about NFL grades from the draft. Shout out to everybody who is tuning in live with us. Let us know in the chat how y'all are doing. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Dallas Cowboys take up some needs. Philadelphia dominated the draft so did the seattle seahawks uh what is your takeaway from the second third fourth fifth and sixth and seventh round that we did not get to cover from thursday shows and your takeaway on who had the overall best draft in the nfl um yeah i, th- I think the philadelphia eagles was, of course had the best draft they uh they they got a lot of a lot of talent uh as for the cowboys uh you know i uh, i just uh I don't like the way it went. Um, what didn't I didn't you mind like? The first pick. Huh? What didn't you like? Uh, I just saw the the tight end. I I just thought that was a little bit of a, a panic mode because the tight ends were coming off the board. I guess that fast, and they just kind of like, hey, we got we got to get a tight end now. Uh, I think they should address the uh, offensive guard position, okay. and they had a chance to do that, and. I'll say they did. Uh, Overshone, uh, I don't, I, I don't like that pick just because I. When we're trying to, when we try, are we look, do we looking for a safety? Because I don't, I don't know if that guy's a, uh, a linebacker in the NFL. Uh, it just, I mean, who's your fourth wide receiver? I mean, I tell you the truth, I don't, I don't really trust the third wide receiver uh, because I, I believe what the third wide receiver uh, Gallup. I don't know, I don't know what to expect from him. Uh, I haven't seen anything about to- Tolbert, so I mean, I don't know. Uh, and then uh, I don't know the the Deuce Vaughn. I know everybody's like, oh, you know, it's such a special moment because his dad and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was a, a great pick, just because. Do we need another kick returner, or is this? You think this guy's really going to play in the backfield? I know he can't be a third down back. Uh, I mean, he's going to be the. I think on the depth chart, he's going to be the third back. So, I don't know, man. It, it seemed like uh, the Cowboys were definitely sleeping this year on the draft, man. I I, did, I give them a a, a uh, D minus. Well, uh, great. That's uh, that's that's fair from you. That's I don't expect anything less. Total pessimism. And I understand it because they haven't proved anything from you. I think you're totally wrong. I think you didn't, I think, identify the players and maybe their totality on what they produced in college. I think Overshown was a good value pick. Uh, Deuce Vaughn is currently RB number two behind Pollard. If you don't know, you may want to go check that out. Uh, could he be Could he be used in kick return, punt return? Absolutely. I think he's going to be more of a all-purpose back, a bigger threat to catch out of the backfield. But that's neither here nor there. I think they do have holes at the offensive line. Uh, as far as the fourth receiver, I don't know, man. A lot of people are speculating that there still may be a trade out there for the Cowboys and another receiver out of Phoenix. Will that happen? Probably not. But if it did happen, um, I know you have a lot of speculation on D-Hop. That's to be seen whether that's going to come to fruition or not. Dallas, for me, overall, C+. 
Uh, a lot of pros out there giving them B minuses. I think they're a solid C plus C right in there. I don't think as far as a D. Uh, I think they totally missed on the offensive guard position, like you had stated. Um, panicked with the uh, with definitely with Shunover. That pick was. I think they should have taken the tight end out of Georgia. Seemed to be a better fit. Um, but you know, Jerry likes to have that Jay Novacek type of Jay Witten type of tight end, and he got it. With that being said, uh, I think Dallas had a fair draft. Not great, not good, but fair. Average at best. Uh, West is a little bit below that. That's okay. Philadelphia definitely addressed all their holes, then made the trade for Swift uh, in the middle of the fifth or sixth round. I can't think of the top of my head. Howard Roseman. Howard Roseman right now is playing 3D chess, and everybody else is playing checkers. And Jerry Jones, and I don't even know if Jerry Jones knows there's a game going on. Because Howard Roseman right now, the GM for the Eagles, is taking everybody's lunch money and also having the ability to garner all the talent. It's, it's, like, it's like he has the, the cheat code for the NFL, and it is just absolutely astonishing to see how he's taking everybody's leftovers and turning them into you know, a great casserole, to use a, you know, an analogy for food because you know, big boys love food now. Wes, what is what are you giving the grade for the Eagles? You're really down on Dallas with your with your D minus. What are you giving the the Eagles in their grade if they won the draft? I mean, I, I would. It's definitely an A, maybe A plus. I don't know. They, uh, I just feel like they they uh, plugged a lot of holes. I think they got deeper and uh, with their team that already just you know went to the Super Bowl. So. I mean, I, th- I think they definitely – they got a running back. You know, they already have receivers. Uh, so, I, they, they've gotten deeper on defense uh, with a lot of talent from Georgia. Mm-hmm. So, I if mean, you look, yeah. if you look at If you look at the picks for Philadelphia Eagles, they went straight defense, and they went straight defense outside of Jackson's uh, – outside of um, – well, that's going to be Seattle. Outside of their safety from Illinois, they went straight defense from the SEC. I mean, they, they, they ended up with Nolan Smith and with Carter out of Georgia. And then they ended up with, uh, I think, a defender out of Mississippi State. It's like they just went straight SEC. And I, and I don't know why more teams aren't kind of following that game plan. It's like, why wouldn't you go get all your defenders from Alabama and from Georgia? And maybe, maybe, I don't want to say Florida, but you could pick from Florida. And just fill your roster with those players. You know what they're coming. You know where they're coming from. You know the development they're getting at those programs. And they obviously went and were recruited to go play at that school for a reason. You know what they're going to do in the NFL. Um, the Overshone pick with going back to Dallas was, I, I think it was a good value pick there. But you're right. What is he going to be in the NFL? Is he going to be, there's no way he's going to play inside interior linebacker play. No way in hell. Is he going to be an edge rusher? Are they going to put Overshone on the edge and move Micah back into the interior linebacker core? Maybe. That would be smart because Micah rushes from inside both A-gaps and B-gaps terrifically well. So it would be I'm, – I'm curious to see. Uh, were you – I know we kind of talked about Mozzie Smith on Thursday a little bit. What have, what have you learned about Mozzie Smith since he was drafted in the first round for the Cowboys? Um, not too much. Uh, just, uh, I know he's got a checkered past. Uh, they were talking about, you know, he's only got one technique, uh, but they said they could work with him, you know, get his, uh, I guess his stance a little wider. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were talking about him, you know, possibly being a, a guy that can rush the uh, quarterback up the middle, even though he only had like, uh, 0.5 sacks at Michigan. Uh, but I mean, the, the, the dude seems, he seems like a beast. He seems like he can take up, you know, two linemen at a time for sure. So, you know, uh, that's why I said, I, I, I kind of like the pick. I know a lot of people weren't happy about it yeah. just because of this checkered pass and that kind of stuff. But I mean, I don't know, dude, I, I wanted the, uh, officer guard from, uh, Florida. I mean, I put it out there. I, yeah. uh, but I know we, we could have got him but I thought we took the tight end, right? No? Yeah, that, that was a second-round pick. Yep. 
And that, that, that's maybe that's why I'm so hard on this tight end is just because that's not who I wanted. And I wanted, I wanted the guard from Florida. The Cowboys often also drafted Hunt, uh, Hunter Lupke out of North Dakota state university at fullback. And I, I saw his highlight reel. I saw what he could do. Uh, I see, I see Riggins old school from the, from the uh, Redskin days. He wears the number 44. Uh, he can catch out of the backfield, which is good. The one thing I didn't see on his highlight tape is he can't, I don't know if he can block. And if you're going to be drafted to play fullback, I you need to show me you can block because that's great that you wear that position. It's great. You wear that 44, but if you can't block like you check and catch like you check, and I don't know if y'all know this or not, but you check used to be on the Dallas Cowboys. And then you went to San Francisco and starts balling out over there. So you have to ask yourself, can, will Dallas be able to make this transition? It's apparent they want to go and do – they want to run the ball. They Now, can they do it? That's the question. You're going to have to fill holes at the offensive line position. You're not going to be able to do it, I think, what you have right now. You're going to have to make a move in these undrafted free agents. And I hate to tell you this, but there's not a whole lot of humans walking the earth that are 6'3", 6'5", 330, and who have sweet feet. It just ain't gonna happen, and it's it's really tough. If I were you, I'd be going to the I'd be going to the schoolyards and looking for brothers who are heavy and who are playing basketball because those are the types of athletes you're gonna need because they got the feet to move but they can play basketball, and you can just tell by the body type. You know, I'm sorry, you ain't pulling anybody out of the XFL and you ain't pulling anybody out of the USFL. Those players can't make it; they're not ready, not to play at this level. Yep. Well, I'm. For the once, Wes, Wes don't have much to say after my soliloquy. Is it, are you all right, Wes? What's going on? Yeah, I, I, I'm fine, dude. I mean, it was a long weekend, so I am a little bit, oh, a little, little bit run oh, down. You're right, <laughs> you're right. It's all right. I know, I know you used up your energy reserves. You know what I'm saying? I know you, I used them. Man, it was a long weekend, man. We had, I was in, you know, hanging out with y'all Thursday. That's right. Had to drive to uh, Fredericksburg, you know, I had a good time. Then it's wedding Saturday, then drove back. And for my birthday, I had to have a little fun. So I'm a little, I'm a little worn out. Slow. But uh, let's, let's ask James how he feels about the Packers and their draft. All right, go ahead. Um, this is all right. They ended up getting two back-to-back -back wide receivers. Lots of offense in, yeah. for, the, for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, so I guess that's a good thing. I don't know, man. Uh, I, I really didn't do my research on the guys that they picked up. So, um, but I will. You know, there's still time before the season starts. So, what is your what is your takeaway from the Packers being heavy with their offense, and now that number twelve is gone, wearing a different jersey and different number? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to refer to him as number twelve when we're talking about Green Bay. Out of respect. Oh, well, now he's number eight. I understand that. <laughs> I get it. And you should probably still call the Raiders from Oakland and the Washington. I just had respect for out of respect for Sean. I don't do that. Um <laughs> uh, What was the question again? Sorry. What is your takeaway that when twelve uh, was in Green Bay, now that he's gone, they'd go offense heavy, but when they were there now don't get me wrong, they went Lucas Van Ness. You know, Lucas Van Ness daddy was real happy for him. He had to give a little extra pat pat. I'm just going to put it out there like that. You ain't seen the video. You need, you need to go. We need. We should probably put that on our website. Lucas Van Ness's dad was uh, congratulatory to, you know, the whole family with extra Pat Pat. I'm just going to leave it right there. He was, a, he, was, he was saying good game, good game, man. That yeah, yeah, no good doubt. Good game, game good game. Cause that was, I should say good game because Pat Pat could be something a little more intimate, right? So I should say he was saying good game, good game. My fault. Good, good Wes. I appreciate that. You saved me. Um, I don't know, man. It's kind of it's kind of crazy looking back, you know. It's like I don't I don't understand the logic in it. Um, you know, from not drafting uh, offensive players to uh, to help out arguably the one of the best quarterbacks in the league. So, but I mean, if they're doing the right things going forward, you know, I'm a Packers fan. So, packs, yeah. So they were to pick up second round Lucas Musgrave out of tight end out of uh, Oregon State, then Jaden Reed out of Michigan State. And then another tight end, Tucker Craft. So they're going if they're going tight end heavy, they're gonna start doing power run. They're gonna want to run the ball. This is this is a lot like what San Francisco's doing. And I can see how uh Lefleur 
would be trying to emulate that style. They're going to do it in Miami. They're going to do it in Houston. It looks like Dallas is trying to do it a little bit. San Francisco, of course, is going to do their thing. The question is, do you have the pieces to do it? Do you have the player personnel to get it done? Miami looks scary right now with who they drafted. They drafted a lot of speed. A lot. It'll be interesting to kind of see them. Shout out to Carla in the chat. Thank you for joining us. We missed you over the draft. Hey, man, Chicago. Chicago had a pretty decent draft themselves. Darnell Wright, offense tackle to protect, you know, uh, protect fields. DT, Gervon Dexter. Got Pickens out of South Carolina again. They got some good. They got some good picks. I think uh, Chicago also drafted Roshan Johnson in the fourth round. That I think is going to be a sleeper pick. Roshan I think is going to do very well in the NFL now in Chicago. Uh, let's get into a quick break. It's going to be of a. We're going to have a uh, shorter show today than uh, than regular. We got some little ones who are doing some school activities and they need all their rest. So let's get into a quick break. Give us about two or three minutes. We'll come back. We'll talk about some basketball. We'll get off the rails a little bit. Um, Lakers, Golden State, round two, Wes. Did you see that coming? Uh, yeah. I, I, th- I think the uh, the Grizzlies, I think that they just thought that uh, the Lakers were too old, but you got to realize that the Lakers didn't have AD and LeBron together the whole season. And, I mean, that's the biggest thing is that the Lakers need – Anthony Davis out there to win. Flat out. LeBron so, James. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah.
Welcome back, everybody. It is the Paul Rodriguez Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get into a little bit of basketball. We don't really talk much, but we are getting into it today. Lots of big sporting events this coming weekend, though. We got the NBA playoffs. We got soccer tournaments going on. We got boxing with Canelo. We got UFC 288. We got Cejudo Triple C versus uh, the champion now, Jermaine Sterling. I know James is getting hyped for that one. Watched a little bit of, uh, you know, the uh, embedded last night. So we'll get into the UFC talk probably a little bit at the end today. I got a story that I'll tease. Uh, James brought it up because we saw an Instagram reel. You brought it up. <laughs> uh, shout out to, shout out to uh, my man Beetlejuice out there making a new meme for everybody to kind of cut up. But um, if y'all remember, Girls Gone Wild, I got a story about that, and I'll tell it here after we get off the rails a little bit. Look at Wes lighting up. There he goes. There he goes. That smile. All right, Wes. <laughs> big basketball this coming when does this start we got lakers golden state this week when does game one tip off all night but i don't hold me to that no uh, worries let me see let's see Ooh, what you call it in a tight one talk about boston yes, and boston philly boston, tight yeah it's a two-point game in the late in the fourth quarter okay uh, yes, Lakers Warriors game one tomorrow night. Also with uh, game two of uh, meets and uh, mix and heat. Dude, what about Jimmy Butler in this uh, playoff run he's got? Cold I mean, blooded. Dude, I mean the 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 because I thought they were going to force another game at least when the uh, Milwaukee and then maybe with with Milwaukee and uh, it looked like it and then Butler just said nah nah nah. Not, not so fast, my friend. Absolutely. Uh, and they came back. I mean, he I think he had 98 points in the, the last two games of that series yeah. against the Bucks. And then he comes out, and he takes advantage of uh, the Knicks not having uh, Julius Randle and gets him a, a quick, a quick uh, win. So kudos to them. Yeah, well, maybe I Rachel's know. making him, paying him some visits. I don't know. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy making him drop. That's all I know. Giant yeah, she getting was, buckets. Yeah, she was at some. She, I think she was at the game the other night. I was totally you joking. Walk around. I was totally she joking. Was, she was at the game. She was at one of the games. Uh, I will say in Miami. I think she was in the game and at the game. And you can see her walking around, and they they, they making a joke like she's walking around looking for Jimmy. Hey man. But uh, uh, and. You know, the uh, Suns and Nuggets, that should be a, a great series. Uh, you know, you got the uh, last year's MVP going up against uh, the uh, Suns with uh, Kevin KD. Durant. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, it's some good matchups that, you know, everybody wants to watch. I think the the 76ers and the, the Celtics, I mean, you're talking about Embiid mm-hmm. versus uh, the, the, the Celtics. I mean, if Embiid can – I don't know, man. I, I, that one's gonna be. I think that one's gonna go to, to seven games because I just think the the wing play of the uh, Celtics are just gonna give the 76ers a lot of problems. But I don't think the Celtics can match Embiid. Uh, I mean, well, I don't think I don't know if anybody can match Embiid. He should be. I mean, he's the most dominant player I think down low uh, in the NBA. So I think he was uh, out. Be, I think he was out tonight. Yeah, uh, is he? Yeah, I think uh, they said he was ruled out tonight. I don't know what he's dealing with. Oh, man. Well, that, that may be why well, it's a tight a, game. Yeah, I mean, that, that says a lot for the uh, for for the 76ers to be. Yeah, it looks like he's not in there. Uh, you know, for them to be competing without their, their star player. So, you know, good for them. Dude. Good for them. But, uh Dude, the the, uh, the Lakers, man, uh, I, man, uh, just, uh, what? Give it to me, Wes. What's what's going on? What is it? I mean, they could they could be it could be a scary run for them. I, I, it could be a scary run for it, just because you're talking about you got LeBron James and you got AD. I mean, I know they make fun of Anthony Davis, calling them Anthony Street Clothes Davis, but <laughs> when the dude is playing, yeah, and he's when healthy, he is playing. He, he, you know, he's he's very good. Uh, you know, he's up there with Embiid as a, a down, uh, you know, a, a, force. Uh, uh, somebody playing down low that can bang in the paint, or you know, step out and knock down some threes. So, were you, know, you being it, it were you being be real careful? 
Were you being real careful there not to sound like Chuck? Bang down low? What? No, I'm not going to be banging any dude down low. No, no. I'm just curious. I just no. want to know if that's what you're, being, you're trying to be careful of, not to make a little slip up like that. No, I was I was trying to choose uh, what I was going to say, uh, the, the post or whatever. I didn't know which one. Freudian but, I mean, slip, if you will. But yeah, it, 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 it's definitely going to be a series. This is a series what everybody wanted in the NBA with the Warriors and the Lakers. You're going to see a lot of uh, – uh, stars in the at the game. So I think at both uh, arenas, I mean, you're going to see a lot of Golden State. I guess you're going to see a lot of E-40. Yeah, I better believe uh, that. Yeah. Why they giving then, my yeah, man such a hard time? Why are they giving E-40 <laughs> such a hard time? I don't know, man. I mean, ho- hopefully uh, Uncle Shannon will, will stay calm. He won't try to fight anybody. Damn, you know, maybe maybe, maybe that would be the, ne- the next one to be E-40 against uh, Uncle <laughs> Shannon. That ain't even that ain't even close. They got those are two different body types, my friend. We oh, got two yeah. totally different body types. I'm just, that ain't even oh, a, yeah. that ain't even a we ain't even talking about that one. Shannon's yeah. out here trying to test young young men, and E40 out here just trying to chill. He ain't trying to get off <laughs> get anybody business. Give me a break. E40 Man. wants to E40 wants to drink a forty. Shannon wants to fight. Come on, man. After drinking a 40. After, well, no, after drinking his yak, as yeah, he says. Yeah. That yak. I'm like, come on, Shannon. Don't, but don't get, I, I got to give it up. I do like Shannon's, his own, I like his show. Not the one he does with Skip, but I like Club Shay Shay. I like his, that's, it's good. I like it. He does a good job. But, man, when he's on his show with Skip, I'm just like, dude, I can't take you. I can't. It, it's too annoying. Ooh, which one, Skip or him? Both. It's both of them. Both. It's, on, I, it's just I, that I, show, I, though. I haven't really watched. I've, I've seen like some. I see the highlights here and there, but uh, in the DFW area, yeah, Skip Bayless is hated. Oh, but I believe absolutely, absolutely <laughs> believe that. Yeah, uh, like the Celtics are getting 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 a little cushion. About it's on one eleven, one oh seven with uh, two oh five left in the game. Uh, Yikes! So. Uh, but you know, I think that's going to be a long series. So, yeah, I, you think? I, I you think? Basically, do you think all of these yeah. series are going to go like seven? Like we're going to see seven games, especially in the West. Yeah, yeah, uh, especially in the West. I, I think so in the East too. I, I think uh, I, I don't see any uh, sweeps. I don't. I don't see any. Uh, you know, I see. I, I I can't imagine any of these uh, series is going less than uh, six games. Now, for a long time, there's we've had a lot of dominant teams, right? Like there was an, a run, especially like in the 2010s, and then when the bubble happened in 2020, these super teams were kind of like dying out, and it's almost like the you know when they had that bubble year, that's when the super teams kind of all got di- broken up and disbanded. We've kind of seen. Now that it's it's we're back to what we were having, in, especially in the '90s and like in the 2000s, where you got two big mega stars, and those mega stars are going to lead their team. With Golden State, I don't know if they have two mega stars, Wes, anymore. You know, I think Clay is broke, is dropped off. It seems like, and because of that, Steph has had to like morph almost. He has to he has to transcend his game to a new level where he's starting to attack the hole more. We've all seen him shoot baskets out of the gym, but now when he's getting to the to the rim a little bit more, do you see that he has to elevate and transition and morph a little bit so that he has that, I guess, s- deceptive attacking ability to make, like to compensate for the lack of the other megastar? Because we got LeBron and AD out there in LA, and then you got KD with the Suns and his band, and then you got you know, the nuggets. And to me, it's like, who's that other megastar that Steph has? And if he doesn't have it, why did he have to like morph his game to be more attacking now? Um, I, I hear what you're saying, but I think it's more that the, the, what happened with the Warriors is that they got Wiggins back. Uh, ah, okay. That's a big deal for him. He's a, uh, you know, Wiggins is a, a, a wing uh, defender. And also, you know, so that helps him out. And then, you know, 
they may not have, I guess, a mega star, but having Draymond Green as one of your leaders, he's a, he's a guy that he's that rah rah guy, he's that guy that's gonna get everybody fired up. He's not gonna, you know, get you points, but he's gonna make he's gonna make a great defensive play to get the get the team hyped, to get the team going, and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And uh, Jordan Poole is uh, really picking up a lot of I think Clay's uh, slack when. Uh, Clay's not doing that great. Jordan Poole is uh, making some buckets, and you know they got they got some role players. But uh, when it's when Steph is getting it going, uh, yes, they're they're pretty they're pretty tough because now you you just spread the floor and uh, everybody can have open shots when uh, because you just got to watch out. You got to pay so much attention to Steph, you know, especially with his ball handling skills and the ability to shoot once he comes across half court. I mean, it's ridiculous. So it should, it's going to be a fun series to watch. It's going to be a fun playoffs to watch. Uh, well, whoever wins going, going forward, I just hope everybody stays healthy. That's what, uh, you know, you want everybody uh, at a hundred percent because I think that's uh, the best basketball. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you, you finished with that last point about being healthy. I want to know, and I want each of y'all's opinion, James and Wes, can you tell me what's the over under? What's the number? Is it two or is it three? How many kicks to the groin does Draymond have for this series? I'm just asking. I want to know how many kicks to the groin is it? What's the over under? Three or two? Uh, I'm gonna say I three. Mean, I'm gonna say three. You give me over under. So Wes, Draymond kicks to the groin over under three. You pick over or under. I'm 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 gonna say under. I'm gonna say one. Whoa, James. I'm gonna say under as well. I'm gonna say uh one kick and I'm I'm gonna say one punch too. One punch or, and one or kick. A tap. I guess hand to the ground. Now here's my question. Who does he do it to? Does he do it to LeBron or does he do it to the new Reeves kid? Who who's he uh who's he covering? I don't know what position. I don't know who he would cover. Uh, I mean I mean it, it it would depend. Uh he might he might get a lot of Anthony Davis actually. Yeah. Uh so and LeBron, I mean, if he's, I in a, if he's gonna be covering, uh, if LeBron's gonna be, uh, you know, attacking the basket, Draymond's gonna be there. Yeah, but knowing with LeBron, he'll, it won't be a kick, but LeBron will make it seem like it, and you know, yeah. he'll, uh, you know, he'll, he'll go full Ezel, is what you're saying? He'll go my neck and my back, full Ezel. Yeah, yeah, you should, that should, yeah, that's the one. How I many, how many uh, flops will LeBron have? Okay. I mean, I I think he's gonna average. He probably averaged at least two a game. So, for real, LeBron. Oh yeah. LeBron. LeBron. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. I I I, I don't see Le, LeBron and uh, Draymond getting into it because I think they actually are are friends. I think that would be I, I even just, more of an excuse for them to get into it because they're just their competitiveness is gonna take over. I, I see. I I see it more. <laughs> I, I think Draymond would attack uh, Anthony Davis uh, more. But okay, that's my opinion. All right, fellas. Eight forty-two right now. Time to get off the rails. We're gonna wrap this bad boy before nine, just to get uh get everybody home safely and early. Uh, let's so let's just do it. Let's just get into it. Uh, I had a story I would tease, and I wanted to know y'all's opinion. Um, so back in the day in my spring break days from, you know, when I was a young, young lad, uh, we'd go to, you know, S South Padre Island for the spring breaks and what have you. And so I went one time and of course, you know, you have your, your places that everybody goes to and I'm, I don't really like to be in groups, right? I don't, I don't like to be, I like to be on the, on the perimeter. I want to be away from everybody. I just want to be able to watch and sip and chill and do my thing. Well, the isolated area that I was at was dark and in a corner and away from everybody. And this is the time of, you know, the early two thousands when a certain program that would come on at info infomercial hours, probably after midnight, uh, where, you know, girls are going crazy. Girls gone wild had was coming out and it was doing its thing and making its round and making its tour. And I had heard about it. I had known about it. I may have, you know, Seen it, seen the infomercial here and over there. Wes is pretending like he ain't ever heard this story before. Not this story, but this uh, infomercial. And so, of course, I'm in the corner sipping, and I see, like, these cameras. Of course, it's South Padre Island. It's spring break, and, of course, they're trying to film. Getting content. Very good, James. 
turn your mic so I can hear you. <laughs> and so with them getting contact, of course, you know, they're doing their recruiting and everybody's drinking and sipping and doing their thing. So, of course, I'm minding my own business. And I see this camera guy say, get in the shot, get in the shot. And I'm like, what do you, I don't know anything about film. I don't know anything about photography, nothing. He's like, get in the shot, get in the shot. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then these two girls just appear. And then it's this bright light, like the lights we have, you go from dark to bright. And I'm just like, my eyes are squinting. And then there's, then you just see this rush. The girls do their thing. And you just see all these heads turn, and it's me and these two chicks, and I'm just like, I'm looking like puzzled and confused. And then, remember the movie World War Z? Do y'all remember that movie World War Z? Or do you remember a movie? Um, just think about a, a rush of zombie-like individuals. When the girls did their thing, this rush just comes, <laughs> and then there's these dudes, these security guards come out of nowhere and they just form this barrier around the camera guy, whoever the director was and these two girls. And I'm over here just like trying to get out of the way, right? Trying to get out of the shot. Cause I'm, I don't know what this is going to be used for. I, I don't know. And he's like, the guy turns around and says, girls gone wild on the back of the dude's photographer shirt. And I'm just like, did I just get put into one of these commercials and I didn't even know it. You never saw any footage? Y'all, but y'all, <laughs> why would I buy it? That's the only thing. I, I would, I was, dude, it was a, the problem of my life. What would I need to buy I'm anything sure you for? Can scrub the internet now. Well, that's what I was going to leave up to the internet. If you ever find it, I'm sure somebody out there somewhere, sometime, maybe after I'm not on this planet anymore, will find that content. But yeah. Well, I will do some research find and it. find it. Look at these two. <laughs> y'all are y'all are like I'll I volunteer as as uh what is that? What is it from uh as volunteer as what? Pledge, virtue, uh what's the movie with Jennifer Lawrence when she does the bows and arrows? Tribute. I volunteer as uh, tribute. Um, y'all are volunteering as tribute. Uh, uh, Hunger Games? Hunger Games, thank you, sir. Yeah. So that was one of my that now I, I kind of have an idea of what people see when dudes are just like rushing somewhere. I was like, that is crazy. Like you just see eyeballs and movement of just humans. And I was just like, this is nuts. Horny humans. <laughs> Apparently. And I'm over here just trying to like, no, he's like, oh, just get back. I'm like, no, dude. I was like, I don't want to do this. You freaking weirdo. Of course, I had to take a look just to see what's going on. He's, I'll take your shirt off. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> payday, <laughs> payday, <laughs> payday. Yeah, paid money, Jack. But yeah, you know, then you kind of have to just like think about like, uh, why is this? Yeah, what are we doing here? I weird. guess as as an older as an older guy, I think back and I was like, that's fucking stupid. Yeah, that was a right. weird time. Like that shit wouldn't fly these days. No, absolutely not. They just go on OF and there it's there for you there, right? Yeah, they so. probably like paid them like fifty bucks. I don't even know. I don't even. I don't. I wouldn't know. Yeah, I didn't exactly ask. But they had yeah. to like they had to like the securities who sh- who showed up. They literally had to like they're just pushing these dudes right because they're just whoom, a swarm. And I was just like, dude, I gotta get the I gotta get out of here. I had to just That's get wild, out. Dude. That's it was, literally wild. <laughs> it was it was literally it was a it was a shit show. It was literally a shit show. Nah, I, I made the mistake of uh, letting a girl get on my shoulders to so she could you know flash the crowd and yeah, you get rushed and it's like, yeah, hey, dude, like, yep. I I mean, it's some I, I it's some pathetic directed. dudes out there. It's some pathetic yeah, dudes. Like, y'all are pathetic. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm not I'm not being. A weirdo and say don't look because of course you look right yeah. but, yeah, but if you're rushing up there like you're deals. like you're just never pathetic. seen it yeah never seen a pair it's like what you've never it's like you've never seen a woman is that what you're telling me you never seen it yeah. you're just that's pathetic <laughs> it's like, what a fuck yeah. what a joke it's like you really that pathetic it's like you have no games yeah. that's what you're telling me right now you can't talk to women is what you're telling me answer him Wes <laughs> oh, my man my man my man Wes Oh, watch out! 
<laughs> Anyways, back to it. Uh, that was my off the rails for the story. And apparently we have two people who are going to figure it out, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I Knowing you, James, you'll find it in like a week and be like, hey, Paul, we're going to get group message. Look what I found. Like, great. Erase it. I'm going to... Um... Yeah, I'm gonna start binging. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna download every I single you one. You, you, I, I don't think you could find that trash. I don't think you could find it. If it's out there, you can find it. Oh, if it's on the internet, you see me? Yeah. Oh if yeah. It's on the internet, I'll if find it. Okay, LimeWire. Remember uh, what was it? LimeWire or um, what was the other one? ShareBear. Cause I'll. Hey, that's that's two thousands right there. That's two thousands. <laughs> Uh, okay. Any any other crazy stories y'all want to talk about tonight? Nah. Mm. Oh, y'all real tight lip. Now I talk about my crazy story, and y'all are like, oh, real quiet, real quiet. I was uh, let me see. There's this meme that I ran across, and I was kind of uh, having a uh, little chat with my friends about um. Let me see where it's at. Hold on. Yeah, it was like, it says, uh, 10th grade, it says, uh, this dude, and he's just like, looks depressed, and it says, 10th grade me watching my crush get picked up by a 20, 28 year old dude. And it just made me think of this, of this one girl that I had a crush on when I was like in 10th, all through high school. Yeah. But she just like had me in the friend zone, dude. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Other, um, meanwhile, she was banging everybody <laughs> but me. <laughs> yeah. Well, why would you, why would you want that? <laughs> yeah, true. I was like, all right, yeah, cool. Yeah, That's cool. Thanks yeah. for letting me know. Let me tell. Thanks for letting me know what you really want. <laughs> yeah. That ain't it. Yeah, I was just. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I get brought, it. I brought that up to my buddies, and uh, I mean, I don't know. You just think back to when you're in high school and shit. Yeah. I get it, man. With the, with the high school stuff is a little bit different, but like when you see it through a lens of an adult, like adult, like I'll be forty in a few months, right? And I'll just be like, man, I don't want that. No, thank you. I'll pass. Yeah, it's like I want someone who's gonna want me. Wow. Right? You gotta want someone who's gonna want you. Wes, who wants you, Wes? Uh, wow. Well, the uh, Sixers just stole Game One. James mm-hmm. Harden hit a three to win it. Uh, who wants me? Yeah, who, who wants, wants you? Nobody. The internet apparently does. We got. I got a lot of comments saying you did a really good job on uh, Thursday. Thursday show. They were shocked. Like a lot of people were shocked that you were there. In the in studio, live in studio, they were like, "Oh, Wes is there." I was like, "Yeah, he was there." So that was good. Got a lot of good feedback. Uh, I had a good time, man. I had a good time. I'm glad I, I made it. Even though I woke up the next day with uh, uh, with a uh, nail in my tire, but I think it's uh, uh, I heard the other day I was listening and they were targeting this uh, uh, active group. They're targeting big uh suvs and they're deflating their tires and i think that might have been what it was because they didn't touch anything else they just and obviously you could tell that somebody put the nail in my tire so i guess that was their way of telling me you know i need to get a electric car but i'm like so you think somebody you think somebody put that nail on purpose like someone physically did it you think yeah 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 yeah. It's the way it's placed. You, the you don't you don't get that you from uh, yeah. yeah. You don't get that so from like, like an accident. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's why I was like, man, that's messed up. Like, well, I Wes, well, uh, I know some people who know some people who may be able to look into this. So, um, you know, I mean, you know where I was at. Yeah, facts. That's what, that's, yeah. Facts, facts on facts to get them racks on racks on racks. Eight fifty two. Uh, James, are you excited about two eighty eight this weekend, Saturday? Yeah, I got a I got a busy uh, weekend plan. Okay. Yeah, I got. Uh, well, they're having a Cinco de Mayo uh, here downtown, so we'll probably be over there on Friday, and then Saturday I got the five k. Uh, so you can do that in the morning. Yeah. Where yeah, it's at seven thirty in the morning. James, I might go. I might go. I don't know about seven, but yeah. we'll be out there for. Oh, uh, how long you? How do you train for that? I mean, Mozzie's run today. Uh well lately I've been running three like three a day or not a day but I've been running like three times a week. Like, can you can you see he's, he's getting he's getting that nice bronze color on his uh from the sun again I don't know if y'all can see it. <laughs> he's got that he's got that he's got that ball fade going too. You get you looking you looking like a outdoors mm. person. Um, get some sun. Nice, nice Thank you. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so got the, the 5K on Saturday, and then my uh, my grandma's having a birthday party for herself. Well, my sister's like organizing it, uh, and that's at three, and they want me to make burgers, so I'll cool. be out there grilling and stuff. And then uh, UFC later on that day. Are you gonna watch Canelo too, or? I probably have it on the laptop right okay. there. I'll be mainly watching. I, don't, I mean, I know what's gonna happen with Canelo. Yeah, it's not even gonna be a fight. I'm not buying that. <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna have it on. Yeah. Somebody will have. Somebody will buy. It. Somebody yeah. will pay for it. Yeah. I got it. Um, I'm I'm looking for. I want to watch Canelo more than I want to watch uh, the Algermain because I think I already know where that one's gonna go. I think Cejudo's just gonna destroy Algermain, like embarrass him. Yeah. And what is he do? What is he going to do? Why would he want to come back? Just yeah. to shut up Algermain? Also, fight Volkanovski. You think that's what it is? Yeah, he said he said he's going to fight uh, Algermain, and then he said after that he's going to fight. Uh, he wants to fight O'Malley, and then he wants to move up and fight, um, or is Vol- it down? Move down, Get down, and uh, yeah, take on fight Volkanovski. Volkanovski. Yeah, which he said that would be a that would be a that would be a good fight. Looks like we lost Wes. Let's uh let's send him an invite so we can wrap this bad boy up. We got five more minutes till nine o'clock. Okay. And then uh we'll get out of here on our way. Looks like we are a little bit off on that. I think James is updating right now. Uh Canelo Canelo Alvarez this weekend. I'm want, I just want I'm waiting for him to fight David Benavides. And I don't know when that's gonna happen, but it needs to happen soon. We should probably tell give Wes a heads up that we're gonna send him another invite because, you know. He may may not be aware of what's fully going on. Oh, he said he had to go. He said he had to oh, go. Okay. okay, so he's done. No worries. Uh, with that being said, James, you want to leave the people with anything before we get out of here? Um, oh man, I'm tired. You're tired? <laughs> I know you look tired. I'm a little. I'm a little worn out myself. Uh, for the first time in, I know this is gonna sound like dang. It's like you're so out of shape. Like yeah, I am out of shape, but. I'm sore for the first time in six, seven years. Really? Yeah. Like sore, like workout sore, right? So, you know, your boy trying to, you know, trying, trying to be alive, trying to be healthy, trying to change things. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a long road, but, um, you know, you got to do what you can with what you got. Yeah. As you get older, you'll learn that, you know, health is wealth, as they say. Yeah. You got to start uh, – you start somewhere. I figured I'd start now instead of like 50 and like my body is even more broken down. So I said, hey, let's just make little improvements now. I'll see if we can just maintain, right? Yeah. But what if I just, you know, totally change my body and then be like, Pfft. just go to the gym and talk to women every day. Yeah. It's a life. Maybe. Starts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so funny, James. Nice. Were you going to make a comment about Gone Wild again? Yeah, something like that. Or, yeah. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Right. Foolishness. <laughs> I think because I want to have daughters one day, and then I'm gonna be like, you know, karma's. I I I believe in karma. And be like, oh yeah, yeah, Paul, remember when you were doing this? I'm like, yep. Do I want to do that? Not really. <clears throat> yeah. now, I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be like a weirdo or anything, but yeah, karma's undefeated. Karma's undefeated. Just let y'all know. Anyways, appreciate women. Love women. Beautiful thing on earth. Sure. Absolutely. Appreciate everybody tuning in. And I say that because Mother's Day is coming up in a couple weeks. Shout out to all the moms. Then we're going to celebrate all the dads in June. What about the single guys? Like, is there like a single guy, single girl day? Is there like something like that? I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah. Yeah. I figure that out. Okay. I want to be celebrated too. Everybody gets a celebration except me. It's on my birthday. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a uh, day for everything these days. So I don't know. got to be one. Guys like me, I don't know, James. I don't know. Everybody, appreciate y'all tuning in. Shout out to Carly in the chat. Appreciate you tuning in. Good to have you back, madam. Until mananas, we'll do our top five tomorrow for continuing our series on our overall top five players of all time. Appreciate y'all tuning in. It is a night. We appreciate everything that y'all have done for us. We're continuing to grow our subscribers. Continue to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, love yourselves, love your neighbors. We'll see you tomorrow. Appreciate y'all.